Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of Moms with Yarn. I'm Sharon. I'm Sharon V on Ravelry and Bronx Knitter. Every place else, I think. Instagram. We're and I'm Tracy, TB McCarthy on Ravelry and TB McCarthy 5 on Instagram. Welcome, everybody. Welcome episode back eight. if you're returning. And to new viewers, I can't believe you found us. Yay! Yay! And we do have new viewers on Ravelry. We're up to 108 people. Woo yeah, woohoo! Now what we got to do is get you guys to post your goods. Everybody's <laughs> being a dirty, rotten holdout. <laughs> That's I, true. I think I might be the only one who 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 posted something in the past week. That's true. I think it. I think that's true. That might be right. Did that's you post true. something, Tracy? Well, I posted on Instagram all my vacation pictures. I got so those. I'm holding out if I people know. don't want to friend me on Instagram. You still didn't. Tell uh -huh, you can't see my vacation pictures. Uh oh. You still didn't tell me where you went so I could meet you there next year. If I go ahead well, of you, you can't stop me. <laughs> well, my very last picture, it says it in the sand where I went. Oh, I didn't, haven't been on Instagram. You all know. Maybe you should go on. Because we're friends on Instagram. We are. So I went to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Oh, that's so. nice. That's where I want to yeah. live. Oh, you do? When I retire, I'm going to North Carolina. Right. So I asked my husband if we could buy a house there, and he promptly said no. Why? Because, no. Okay. He just said no. We can't afford two mortgages. Oh. And I said, why? He said, well... If you look in the checkbook, you <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> and I'm like, well, why would I go and do that? <laughs> money. You always want to bring up money. Why? You always want to bring up money and have we have none. And oh. I'm always buying yarn. and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to start that fight. I know. He's like, well, have you looked in your yarn club? I'm like, well, the weather's really nice around here. <laughs> well, we have some. I don't have any knitting to speak of, really. Okay. But you do. Do you I have do. any finished objects? I do. Um, I don't have any finished objects. Um, but I do want to start off by just recapping the knit along. Like we are going through the knit along and I do have some stuff to talk about with that. Um, so the knit along is still going on. Um, and I have some whips to talk about with that. But the knit along, just to remind everybody, is going on from July 10th. So hopefully you've cast on. If you haven't, you have plenty of time. Um, July 10th through August 12th, so just cast on a sock, um, an adult size sock, anytime between that time period, and enter into our contest. We have an excellent prize from that was donated from um, Fish Knits fish, Yarn. Fish Knits Yarn. Fish Knits Yarn. Jody. Um, yep, Jody. She donated a skein of the Fuji Fight Like a Girl um, colorway. Um, yarn. It's beautiful. Sharon's going to show you it. And it's, po it's yeah. posted on the web page. Yep, it's posted up on the web page. Yep, it's beautiful. Sharon's going to show us that in her whips. Um, so that's going to be the prize. We already have one person who's knit up a pair of socks. And finished. So, and finished. So maybe that's the only, maybe you won. Oh, you might win. <laughs> <laughs> she was. Too far, she, she, she you did, might win. She, she did them the, like the first week. Yeah, it was like in the first few I mean, days. I'm like, yeah. really? I mean, yeah. And she might be the only. I mean, look, get on it, everybody, get on it. <laughs> it's so. <cool. laughs> I know. Um. So, right, we have that going on, and then we also have the tour de fleece, with which again, Sharon is um, hot and heavy going on. She also has a prize we are donating for that. Um, and Sharon also posted that uh, prize thread. It just for everybody. It's that beautiful fleece. Fleecy, fleecy. It's fiber. Oh, fiber, whatever. Sorry. Yep. Fleecy fiber. Um, so, yeah, we have that going on. And then we also, again, wanted to put some shout outs to the charity that the Knit One Heart Two Girls are, um, you know putting up and and again we put that in the show notes from last week we'll do it again this week um these girls do a lot for the charities and, and we're, we're happy to you know keep you know supporting them and and we'll do again this week so you know check out their um you know their charity i think it's it's done through the webs um we skills i think it is um and she's um doing it through her church they're um collecting shawls hand knit and crochet shawls if i remember correctly um 
they're you know collecting those and and um you know donating them to to people in need and there's a 50 dollar gift certificate from webs oh yeah they have you a lot send of send in things. your shawl and and also the ladies from knit one heart two are um pitching in a couple of prizes i i believe so yeah. so i'm actually noticing that i might be having some difficulties like my face might be freezing so just bear with me i'm having some slight technical difficulties but hopefully you can hear me and um you can hear me right Sharon yeah okay good so at least you can hear me yeah, yeah. you're okay. freezing up a little bit just a little just but a that's little. okay so you get to see my pretty face when I freeze. <laughs> in freeze frame come on and vote <laughs> okay so I have no finished objects but I do have whips so my first whip which is actually exciting it's not a sock so I'm going to start with that. Like, let's do the exciting stuff first. So I did, I, I started this, which is the Nangu mm -hmm. by Melanie Berg. It looks like this in the picture, mm -hmm. but mine is so much wilder. You go, girl. Oh, yep. that's nice. Those colors go well together. Yeah. So I did this out of the Plucky Knitter um, Primo Fingering. And it's out of the Nantucket Gray and the Before You Go Go colorways. Um, it's just a really nice and easy knit. Um, it's pretty much garter with just the you know the Before You Go Go is just the switch up of the of the um, you know the pattern. It's very easy you know just nighttime knitting. Um, it's getting a little bit large um, in the project bag, but um, it's just nice nighttime knitting now. So. Um, I actually am enjoying it because I haven't done a, a shawl in a while. I haven't done something just easy, mindless like this um, in a long time. So I'm really, really enjoying this. This pretty much was my start off vacation in the car. Mm -hmm. And what I pretty much knit like the first three or four nights that I was in um, the Outer Banks. And, mm -hmm. um, and I really enjoyed it. I, I'm, I'm still enjoying it. I haven't really worked on it in a couple nights. Um, you know, unfortunately, I suffer from migraines, and, you know, I was telling Sharon earlier that for some reason over the last week or so, I've had, it seems like a migraine a day, um, so I haven't really been working that much on the, that shawl, but, um, but I'm really, really enjoying it. I love the colors. Um, it's actually a shawl that um, Sarah, who um, owns the Pucky Knitter yarn, um, she's the dyer of the Plucky Knitter. She, that's the colorways that she did her Nangu in. She did it in, um, I think, a cash, the cashmere line, though. Um, but that's the colorway that she did. And I just fell in love with the colors that she chose. She's, a, she's obviously very, she's excellent in putting together colors. So I just pretty much stole her colors. And, um, and I did it. And, and I'm really, really enjoying it. So, um, you know, I'm taking it slow because I really want it to kind of, you know, I just want to enjoy it. You want to enjoy the process. I do, I do. So, um, I don't even know how far in I am, actually. I think I'm, I don't even have the second sheet. I think I'm, I'm not, maybe I'm a third of the way through, which, you know, I'm okay with. I, I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying it. What size needles are you using? I'm using size six, um, which I was thinking about going down a size because I do generally like dense fabrics when I knit, um, but... I like it. I, d I did what was recommended. I didn't do a swatch because you know how much I hate swatching. <laughs> um, and I like it. Speaking of swatching, the last time we spoke, you were swatching for a sweater. Such a beautiful day out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up next. is my second wear. <laughs> so the next thing I am doing is the vanilla latte socks. You guys can remember that I started this. Um, last week, I'm doing this in uh, Cakewalk Yarns, and I started this with um, the Cherry Blossoms colorway. So I finished one. Woohoo! Yeah. So Very this one nice. came out really good, and it fits perfectly. I'm not surprised because I did it exactly the way that I normally do, which is I pretty much <laughs> try it on at the end and make sure that my toe was, you know, what I needed to be, and then. Um, you know, I finish it off. So it's perfect. Um, is that top down or bottom up? I have never done a bottom, like I've never done a toe up. I've always done a cuff down, always. So I think once I'm done, 
I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to meet my goal of 14 socks in 14. Um, but I think I want to try and meet my goal of 14 socks in 14. The only way I'm going to meet that is if I do things that I'm familiar with, which means I'm going to have to start, I'm just going to have to do cuff down for the rest of the year. In 15, I'm going, that's going to be one of the things that I'm going to do. I'm going to try and do a toe up. I know I can do it. I, I just, I'm not familiar with it. When but I think make, when you make your first pair of toe up socks, you need to make them for yourself because if you use your own foot for a measurement, mm -hmm. you know how it says stop uh, two inches or an inch and a half before yeah. in order for you to make adjustments to the sock yeah. and how it fits, you have to make a pair of socks that you might have to rip back a couple of times, yeah. but they might as well be for you then you can gauge everybody else's foot from that. Yep. So if you I'm, know that from the end of the toe increases yep. to the heel is, say, 40 rows, yep. then, then it'll I, always be that. And the other thing is that when you make um, cuff-down socks, your stitches face this way. Yeah. And then when you make toe up, they yeah. face that way. Yeah. So you have a lot more stretch yeah. in the sock. Yep. itself so yep. gauge is a little bit different stretch yep. is a little bit different so you need to make the first pair for yourself just to see how it goes and how you like it yep. and then you can go you can do the socks on a plane two socks at a yeah. time yeah um all those things that make sock knit i find two socks at a time slows me down you know what i find them to be very loose like i did two socks at a time for my mom and I did them the vanilla, um, the knit, the my, my vanilla heart socks. I did them and the exact same yarn, needles, everything. And they were so loose. She, you know, she's like, I'm like, I looked at her foot and I'm like, those look really loose. She's like, they're okay. I mean, she pulled off her boot and the sock came off in the boot. And I'm like, aren't those uncomfortable? She's like, not really. I mean, she'll wear literally anything I give her, but, you know, they were so loose. And, I, you know, I knit differently on two, two socks, you know, two, two, two at socks. a time. Yeah, two at a time. So I think for me, it's the intimidation of starting a new cast on, like the Judy's Magic cast on. Like, I've never done that before. Like, I, I know how to cast on, you know. You know, joining the round. I know how to do that. I've done hats. I've done, you know, everything with, you know, joining the round, not twisting. Like, I, I'm familiar with that. So the unfamiliarity of that is just intimidating. So, so anyway, next year. So the next thing I did was the Kaji. So I told you this is what I was going to do for the knit along. Mm -hmm. So I started this on, I think, July 11th, which was the day that I was, or maybe the 12th, I actually did. This was when I was in the, actually in the Outer Banks after I started my Nangu. I put that down for a little while, and then I started the Kadi. Um, the Kadi calls for, I don't think you can see it in any of these pictures, but it starts with a peacoat edging, like a, like a very small peacoat top, and then it goes with the cuff, and then the leg portion, and then there's a foot portion. So I tried three times to do the peacoat, no problem, and then do the cuff. But it just, for some reason, like three times I tried it, and no problem with the peacoat, but when, like I just kept missing stitches and miscounting, and for some reason it just wasn't working for me. And then I tried it on and it felt really loose, and I know I wouldn't enjoy a loose sock, so, and I wasn't sure if my mom was going to enjoy a loose sock, so... And I knew, I, I knew that the loose sock of the pulling off of the boot, like she was like, eh. So I decided to just switch up the, the top to just a, like a one by one rib. Mm -hmm. And I did that for five rows. So that was one modification that I made. And then I um, stuck with the pattern for the first part. And then the next part, I again, stuck with the pattern. And then the heel, I changed the heel because again, um, in the pattern, the pattern for the heel that she called for said that the pattern um the heel was going to be very loose and wide 
and my mom and I don't have wide like heels I guess and we know that the heel that I make for all the socks that I've made so far fits really nicely so I just I just use the heel that I normally make and then I continued the rest of the way and did exactly as the pattern called for and honestly the sock fits perfectly this is my first sport weight sock and love it wow looks really nice so this is out of the plucky knitter in one of her classic colorways um, so again this is when you sign up for her classics um, you sign up in advance you don't know what the colorway is going to be you just pick what base you want and it's the luck of the drawer everybody gets the same colorway but you just you know again you pick how much of what base you want um, I picked sport weight and then I'm on my second sock and this is where I am so I finished the heel and I'm just now on the decrease of the heel um, doing the same thing and this is how much yarn I have left you don't look worried you're worried you're Listen, a little worried. I play yarn chicken all the time mm -hmm. it's more than enough all you have to do is just keep knitting. I, I tried weighing my yarn, you know, when they say, oh, this is a little, little, little yeah, whatever. You you say whatever you want to say, because if I find out that my first sock weighs eight grams and my second sock has only three grams left yeah. in the ball, I am not going to sweat it because those are the socks that absolutely will be mine because I'll use a different yarn I know. for the toe. I don't care if it matches or doesn't match. It is well, whatever I it is. Have, yeah, I have this yarn in worse. So this yarn, when I signed up for the Classics, I ordered three skein of sport. Um, the Classics before that, I ordered three skeins of sport. and it, But it came in purple, and it was beautiful. And if you remember, I have a friend, Julie, San Jewel, on Ravelry. Um, she offered me two of her sport weight skeins in the purple because I wanted to try and make a sweater for the girls and I wasn't going to have enough to make a sweater for the girls with only three skeins of sport. So she sent me her two skeins of purple and said, well, when a green comes up, because green is her color, she's a big swampy, swampy, slimy. She loves swampy, slimy. So she said, when a green comes up, you just send me two of the sports. So... The green came up the next round, and I was like, great, great, I'll send you two of my, my sports. So I sent her to two sports. So I know she has my two sports, but what a mean person I would be if I was like, hey, by the way, I sent you my two sports. Hey, yeah, yeah. you can call me Indian and give her if you want to, but I need 100 yards. But P.S., I already did. I was like, by the way, you need to put one of those, like, side... See if you could swap it out for a different. Well, skein I don't need the green. entire skein, and I just said, I'm like, look, I just need you to put it aside and like just, you know. I'll take your care for me. I'll take your scraps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have for whips. That's it. I think that's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. yeah. Normally I have stuff done, but I didn't. Um, count you on you, did, you have done stuff. Go I ahead. didn't count on the Tour de Fleece um, time suck, which is enjoyable, but it still is. I mean, you get four ounces of fiber to spin, and that could take me two or three yeah. days to do. Yeah. So when you and then there has to be a rest period for each yeah. spool of yarn. Yeah. So. Um, I got some spinning done. I had a pound of white merino, if you recall. I do. I saw the... Oh, oh my God. Did I want to shoot myself? So I got... Oh, wow. One. Two. <gasps> three. And four. Oh, my gosh, Sharon. That's awesome. This this one has been spun, washed, thwacked, dried, and it hasn't been measured yet. But I can tell you, it is not only is it squishy. Yeah, it looks it. It also looks... Okay, so <laughs> something went wrong. 
something went horribly wrong. <laughs> and I think I bumped the camera when I put the wool back. <laughs> okay, well, we're back. And, and I was just in the middle of talking about being back from vacation and being really tired and how when I got from back from vacation I had about maybe five loads of laundry that was waiting for me before I went on vacation and now the probably seven or eight loads that generated while I was on vacation and my dryer wasn't working. So my husband, you know, promptly says, call so-and-so because I'm the caller of so-and-so. And I'm like, why do I need to call so-and-so? My dad lives three blocks from us, who's like pretty much an electrician. He's not an electrician, but I remember growing up, my dad fixed everything. Like, you know, that's just what my dad did. My dad, you know, we grew up, we didn't have a whole lot of money. And if something broke, my dad and my grandfather always tried to fix it first. And then if they didn't, couldn't fix it, they called somebody in to figure out what it was and then that person helped them figure out what it was and then they fixed it. So it was even cheaper than getting the guy to fix it. So make a long story short, I called my dad and my dad's like, well, where's the book to the thing that is broken that you could see what the troubleshooting is? So I pull out the book and so now I'm like, my dad is teaching me to fix the thing. Why is he not teaching my husband? Whatever, besides the point. So I open up the book and it says troubleshoot, huh, no heat. So my dryer doesn't have heat. That's the problem. It's running, but it doesn't have heat. So it basically says that, I, that the fuse might be tripped or something, that I have to go out to the garage t to flip the switch, which I know how to do. So I did. I flipped it. And I went in, and I turned it on, and then I opened it and stuck my hand in, and it was hot. So I promptly went to the ATM, took out $200, called my husband and told him that I had to call an electrician in, and he only took cash. Now you're oh, rich. I'm going out and getting a book. -a -book. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't really do the ATM part, but I was seriously but thinking you about it. You could Come have. on. He only took cash. <laughs> I now just need to get like fake business cards made up. With crayon. You can use cray cray Crayola. <laughs> Electrician. Spell Electrician. It. Spell it with a K so people won't think that you're trying to really seriously make Joe money. Joe Smith. <laughs> Don't call me. My number is 555. Not really an electrician. <laughs> it's got your number. It's got your number. Oh, go ahead and call me. So um, anyway, I got to go back to my laundry expedition. So that's where we ended up. So it was really like if you just stopped there, you really didn't miss anything other than the bumpy camera and whatever. I know. And I got to figure out a way to, to snap these two pieces together <laughs> to make one video. Woo! -hoo! So I'm you have glue. Listen, I got Gorilla Glue. Listen, this is another Lou special. Lou is my dad. <laughs> Lou will come in, put a little Gorilla Glue in there, snap it together, <laughs> and we're good to go. I'll go to the ATM, get another hundred dollars. <laughs> That's crazy, right? So don't forget, there's the fish knits Fuji yarn. Fight Like a Girl yarn that's up for grabs if you're participating in the sock cow, just in case that got bumped out. Or not. If you're Sue Bar, she hopes you don't post anything else. Hey, Sue. Because Sue Bar 60, hey, Sue, let's... You know, nobody's going to post. The more socks you post, the better your chances of winning are. So go ahead, Sue. Go, Sue. Go, go Sue. Sue. I'm going to try to do two socks, too. And don't forget, too. don't forget the fiber that you could win for participating in the Tour de Fleece Room. So get your entries in there, girls. Come on, everybody. And, guys, and boys. That's right. Anybody yep. who's who's doing that. Kids. You can't really turn down, turn down a freebie. Don't turn down a freebie. No, it just takes one entry. That's and it's it. from my stash. And, and if you can imagine, there's so much fiber in my fiber cabinet, but I keep air in my bags so that when the air doesn't fit in, so the fiber is not compacted, because that's really bad in spinning when fiber is compacted. So it's still got its fluff. It's still newish. It came in last year. I was part of a fiber club. Join us. Woo woo. Thank you. woo woo! I bet Otherwise, I can do. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep all the prizes. I, or I can do. I can knit more socks than anybody. Oh, and I wanted to just say one more thing. 
when I joined the 52 pair plunge to make socks, um, there I couldn't make 52 pairs of plain vanilla socks. I don't want to wear them, and I don't really want to be challenged because I'm already time challenged. So instead of 52 pairs, I did 26 pair. For the 26 pair, I think maybe four or five of them were um, children's socks, and um, the rest were adult socks. One or two pair were challenging. So I'm saying to you that because you have something of a deadline, because you don't have to make it, the yarn police and the sock police are not going to come to your house, and there's no lightning strikes involved. But this would be because you kind of have to power through all the socks that you are going to make. If you stop short of the 14, but you've learned a new technique, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah, so definitely. Me and, I mean, me and Sue had a discussion <laughs> about you trying the fish lips kiss heel. Yeah. And so I'm saying, shouting out to Sue. Sue, don't feel bad about sending Tracy a message. <laughs> of encouragement to try the fish lips kiss heel because honestly no math no nothing yeah i have it in my library it's only it's two there. pages of instruction yeah it's there and that's because the bottom half of the instructions were cut off so <laughs> i think you should go for the fish lips kiss heel and i okay. think that you can use the fish lips kiss heel on any sock toe up cuff down any sock it's the same pretty much the same instructions so yeah. I think you should do it. Your next pair of socks. Will you commit? Will you commit? Will you commit? Why not? I've committed to, I've overcommitted already. <laughs> Bring it on. Say yes. On. I want to see it on the next pair of socks. I'm going to make, a I'm going to. Beautiful gonna, day out, isn't it? I'm going to make. Look at that beautiful day out. I'm, I'm going to make at least two pairs of socks for the um, sock cow. As soon as the tour de fleece ends, I'll be free. It's only one more week. And I can finish these mystic spirals. The problem is, is that it wasn't bed knitting because of the um, spiral part. Yeah. So once I get to my next pair, it'll be much easier. I'm going for it. How about you, Sue? <laughs> hey, We're Sue, you going to make those socks too? How many pairs are you going to make, girl? You only have to make one pair of socks for the sock cow, but <laughs> I'm going to beat Sue. So I have to make two pairs of socks. Duh, go ahead and commit yourself. You don't have anything else to do. I'm rich. <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> All right, we got to go. We're getting loopy. All right, guys, have a great week. See you next time. Bye. Bye.